In this video we're going to look at how to install FreeBSD on a VMware machine. Um, first I'm installing, choosing to install the VMware image from an ISO file uh, which I've downloaded from the FreeBSD website. Um, I'm using FreeBSD 7.2 release. Um, I tell VMware that I'm going to be installing the other operating system. The other operating system is FreeBSD and I'm going to leave the uh, settings for the VMware machine at the default settings because they should be uh, adequate for running Dominet. And this is the FreeBSD booting on the uh, VMware machine. At this stage you can press return if you want the uh, don't want to have to wait for the countdown. And next we begin to see the hardware probe messages for FreeBSD. Next we choose the uh, country, this is used for setting some default settings. In our case uh, we'll go up and we'll choose Ireland. We can use the arrow keys for this and as it says you can use space or enter to select. And I'm going to choose a uh, keyboard layout here, so let's press return. Then I press return on express to choose an express set install. Here I'm going to choose to use the default disk layout. Um, you, you can press A to do that, it will lay out the disk for you automatically. And you want to mark the FreeBSD bit partition as bootable, so you press S. Uh, next we can choose the FreeBSD uh, boot manager, and then we go on to partitioning, which again we can choose uh, the automatic defaults for. Now at this stage we have to choose what parts of FreeBSD we want to install. I'm going to install the developer uh, package. Now there's a collection of FreeBSD ports. These are um, extra pieces of software which can be installed but we won't need them for a dummy, dummy net because it's a built-in uh, subsystem. Uh, then we choose to install off CD-ROM and then the gives you one last chance to uh, go backwards before overwriting the disk with FreeBSD. So at this point it starts to extract FreeBSD uh, from the CD-ROM into the uh, VMware image. Now I've time-lapsed this a little bit, but the install is about uh, maybe 10 minutes in total. Next, it gives us an opportunity to do other tasks that we might want to do before rebooting. So for instance, we set the root password. And you confirm the root password as usual. Uh, you can also um, set up the network. In this case, I'm going to choose... Uh, there are various things you can choose to do. Uh, I'll turn on SSHD, which will be useful for remote management, and I'm going to turn on uh, configure some of the interfaces. This is a list of the interfaces, and in our case EM0 is the virtual Ethernet card in the VMware box. So I'm going to try IPv6 configuration. This actually wasn't a terribly good idea, as I didn't have an IPv6 root server available. We then get a chance to do DHCP if we'd like to do DHCP on the interface, but I chose it to do it manually. These are the fields that you can fill in. You use tab to move between them. And shift tab will move in the other direction. So I'm going to call the hostway dominate, or the host dominate. I give an IPv4 gateway address, an IPv4 name server address, and an IPv4 address for the uh, device itself. Uh, we have an option to bring the interface up now. I'm not going to bother doing that um, because we'll reboot to do that. And we exit back up again and I use tab to choose exit system store. Now at this stage you're supposed to uh, eject any CDs and floppies. In our, this case we only have a virtual uh, CD drive but we do need to eject that. So I eject the virtual CD, and 
and then we let it reboot. Uh, now this is uh, FreeBSD booting this time not from the CD image but from the VMware disk image. Again we get the hardware probe messages. Now here we can see it's actually configured EM0 this time with the IP address that we asked for. First time it boots it will generate keys for the SSH daemon. Here we're waiting actually for send mail to start, that would have been something we could have turned off. I hit Control c to stop send mail starting there just uh, for brevity and I use uh, Router's username and the password which I chose to enter.